So here I am using TensorFlow version is 2.1.0 here I am using auto mixed version as I am using an RTX graphics card uh, so this has tensor cores which will enable us to train faster so this is the directory where uh, my dataset is stored so here I am creating two variables test path and train path you have to be careful about this uh, path separators uh, you have to use forward slash for Linux and backward for Windows so let's see how much we have in our dataset after the cleaning part so yeah we, we have around 79,000 for training dataset and approximately 19,000 for test uh, which is about right uh, below 20 percent so this is our classes negative and positive and this is our image size 306 by 306 and 34 RGB channel I'm using Keras image data generator to prepare the data set but you can use NumPy directly like if, if you read the images using pillow or OpenCV uh, it will give you an ND array and you can store it and you can use it to train but this is much simpler that's why I'm using it so you have to rescale your or image data set uh, by dividing uh, it with 1 by 255 so I'll be using a sequential model and these layers will be used to train the model and for the optimizer part I'm using Adam Adam is pretty good actually it uh, allows us to converge first so choosing the layers in a model is the most difficult part there is no certain rules that you have to use this many layers for this type of data and all so this this comes from your experience so for the first layer I'm using a convolutional layer with 64 and a kernel size of 3 by 3 and activation layer is relu and the input size is of the is the same as your data set and the second layer I'm using 128 with kernel size same activation layer relu and then I'm using a max pooling of for 2 by 2 this is for feature extraction it uses 2 by 2 pixel for detecting features and here using a layer to flatten all the parameters to create a 1d array for all of the images and then using two dense layer with again relu activation function and then we are using a dropout layer what a dropout layer does is it turns off neurons uh, randomly so that it doesn't depend on a particular neuron much so the last layer is our dense layer with one neuron and uh, we are using sigmoid as an activation function as this is a binary classification we are using one layer for the last layer and finally we need to compile our model so we are using a learning rate of 0 0.0001 and loss binary cross entropy standard for binary classification well here you can see all the parameters so we have total 
21 million trainable parameters for the batch size you have to do some trial and error uh, for your GPU if for my GPU uh, seen if I go above 16 then gives me resource exhausted error you can use early stop to stop the training to stop overfitting of your model see for example if you monitor on validation accuracy then and patience too then if your validation accuracy drops for consecutively two epochs then it will automatically stop the training so you similarly you can do it for the overall loss overall accuracy i am not using early stop here i will train the model in full and we'll see what happens so let's start the training and see As you can see this will take quite some time so I'll skip forward and come back when it's done.
all right looks like the training has been completed successfully our accuracy and validation accuracy is pretty good however i don't think we will be getting this much of accuracy in real world applications but we'll see now let's save the model here you have to specify the extension as dot h5 now let's plot the accuracy and loss graphs looks like we could have stopped our model after 6 iteration um, but it's not overfitted as we're seeing the validation loss and that's almost in line with loss now let's check the accuracy versus validation accuracy this matches the same data All right. And now let's see how it performs on the test image. We have already seen it in the validation accuracy part. But anyways, let's see it again. So as you can see, this is in line with our validation loss and validation accuracy. Now get the predictions for test image dataset. Now we are creating an ND array from the predictions. If it's greater than uh, 0 0.5, then we are assuming it as true, and if it's less than or equal to, then it's false. Now let's plot the confusion matrix. So, as you can see, these are correctly predicted as not NSFW and these are correctly predicted as NSFW images. Our model is doing pretty good in our test dataset. Now let's validate our model against some other images than test or train dataset. So for that we have to shut down this kernel as uh, memory usage is pretty high so we need to release the memory. Okay, now we'll test our model using the saved model and with some other images than the test and train dataset. So this is the path where we saved our model. As you can see same 21 million parameters same layer and before we detect our images as positive or negative we need to resize it to the same as same input as of the model So now let's check it against our negative dataset if it is able to correctly identify all of the images or not. So it correctly identified 8 of the images that these are not NSFW images and it wrongly identified 2 of the images as NSFW images. So that's not bad actually. Now let's check it for our positive data set. As you can see here it correctly identified all of the images as NSFW images. So this is pretty good. And then in the next video we will implement a plus curve service and use the same model to uh, detect uh, images as NSFW images or safe images.